Series as this race continues here with 38 laps complete. It's Dixon, Tagliani, Franchitti, and Weldon. Our race is presented by GoDaddy.com. Back here at the greatest spectacle in racing, our race leader is Scott Dixon by seven-tenths of a second over Alex Tagliani and Dario Franchitti close behind. There you see him in third. A little bit farther back, fourth is Dan Weldon. Look at this, the pass for the position. Here goes Dario Franchitti going into second. So now it is Chip Ganassi racing running one two it'll be interesting to see how these two teammates work together if you know that you don't have to cover your back you can run a much different line than if you have to defend yourself and here comes when weldon tagliani under attack weldon the man who won this race back in 2005 moves into the third position so our pole sitter is now back to fourth and i think the thing that's happening for tagliani right now is that he's dropped two miles an hour on that last lap his car was good something happened and now instead of doing 222s he just did a 220 that last time through and he's already used seven of his 15 push to pass and it's way too early in the race to be relying on that oh it really is and i think i like the way that you explained it last year eddie it's almost like having a debit card you start and using it too soon you got nothing left to buy christmas presents that's with. right and your christmas presents come around on the last 20 laps that's right action side by side you see uh, will power there as he is trying to fight his way back into the battle ryan hunter ray in that mix as well James Hinchcliffe in front of both of them. Ryan Hunter Ray now into the 26th spot. Charlie Kimball has moved into 27th. Will Power has been bumped back to 28th. Two things happen in Will Power's pit stop. Obviously, one, the tire problem, but when the second is he had to go around the track on three wheels. I don't care what anybody says. That's not good for a car. And when a driver's having to go out there at speed and run it, you never know what was rubbing and what wasn't rubbing on the, on the asphalt. And it takes you a couple of laps to believe in it. You just can't go and put your foot on it. I don't care who you are. And he's, he's Australian. He's hard-headed. Power is the last car on the lead lap. 28th position, 22 seconds behind the leader. That pit stop where he lost the left rear tire has been oh so costly. Looking down high above, a great crowd on hand here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as we approach the one-quarter mark of the 100th anniversary edition of this great race. The man out front is Scott Dixon. He started second. They're running 1-2 with his teammate Dario Franchitti right behind. They have got a 1.2 second lead over third place Dan Weldon, the 2005 winner, with Alex Tagliani, our pole sitter, in fourth. Tony Kanan all of a sudden has been moving up and he has just got around Ed Carpenter, moving up to six. He started 22nd at 16 spots. This reminds me of last year when he started in the back of the field and worked his way up. Doc, what do you have on Tony? Exactly a year ago, he started 33rd and got all the way to second in the final laps and ran short on fuel. But Tony Kanan today is a man on a mission. On carb day practice on Friday, he said the car was fast. And although it's going to be 25 degrees hotter today, and it is, he would not allow his engineers to dial in more downforce. He said, you know what? The track's going to be hot and greasy, but I'm going to be fast, and I am going to the front. Right now, TK is exactly where he wants to be. He wanted to be in the top 10 by lap 50 and move in the top five by lap 100, positioning for that first Indy 500 victory. And as he continues to pull away from Ed Carpenter, but farther back in the field, a couple of his old former teammates are running pretty close together back in 18th and 19th position, Marco Andretti and Danica Patrick. And there they are, Danica right now, 18 seconds behind the race leaders. Vince? Danica is moving up, though. Remember, she started 25th, so she's gained six spots, starting to close in on Marco. They did make a front wing adjustment on that first stop. Her was, uh, steering was a little positive in that initial stint. Now, they're just past the halfway mark on their fuel load here, and Danica told me earlier in the week, I will not be impatient. I learned early on from the veterans. It was the number one lesson they taught me. 500 miles is a long way. Be patient. They haven't even had a reminder of that today. She's uh, getting a little bit better and moving slowly but surely forward, Marty. And you saw on the Firestone telemetry that she had to lift going in through turns one and two. There is your top five. Our telecast presented by GoDaddy.com.
Welcome back to Indianapolis as you look down on this fabulous scene today as our helicam coverage is brought to you by GoDaddy.com and a previous winner from New Zealand, Scott Dixon has led 34 laps. We're just past the one quarter way now, and he has made his way to the front. Meanwhile, our pole sitter, Alex Tagliani, has slipped back to fourth place. But it is one of the great stories that we are tracking here today. Back in 2000, racing a car down in Orlando, practicing, the owner of this team, Sam Schmidt, suffered a horrendous crash and became a paraplegic. But he didn't feel sorry for himself. He just came out and said, I want to go to work. And here he is. He is the director of this racing operation, and he directs from his wheelchair. Jamie Little, this is just one of the great stories that any of us have ever been around, and everyone is pulling for Sam. Absolutely, Brent. Sam Schmidt told me at the start of this race, he is living his dream, but his driver, meanwhile, has fallen off the pace a little bit, and he's not saying a whole lot on the radio. How was the car? All right. Atta boy, that just keeps uh, with that pack up there, getting start hitting your marks again. All he said there was, it's all right. He's not saying much. He just lost his rhythm. They said, focus and get back in your rhythm. Guys. All right. Thank you, Jamie, as we're on board with Alex. He, he, he looks comfortable, but if you listen, he keeps coming off the throttle and all the exits of one and two. And if you look at the speeds, the fastest cars right now are Scott Dixon and Dario Franchitti. The Ganassi plan is falling into place. When you can run with your teammate, it's so much easier. And watch the Firestone telemetry. You can just listen how the RPMs go down. Yeah. Off the throttle there, you can see that. And that's not what you want. You want you're in clean air right now. You want to be able to actually drive flat out. And so that means the car is under steering. The front's not acting exactly as the driver wants. He turns in. Listen. Good pace, buddy. Good pace. Keep yeah. Danny in your sight. There you Keep go. That's in exactly your sight. What he needs to change during the next pit stop. Of these two, of the two cars in front, the one that really has the biggest advantage is Frankiti because he's running along at the same pace, but he's using a lot less fuel. Do you see that thank you that he got when he, they, uh, I think that is always, oh. Boy, the car really loses the front end when they get close, doesn't it, Scott? You're riding on board with Dario Franchitti as he flies down the front straightaway. He's following Scott Dixon. And does Chip Ganassi get another Indy 500 win? Stay with us to find out. And welcome back to Indianapolis. As Scott Dixon, the number nine car, makes his way down pit road in approach to pitting. 60 miles an hour is his speed limit, saying the car is pretty good. It's going to be a four Stop. You see the probe go in there, filling it up with Sunoco fuel. No changes right now for Scott Dixon. And he's slow stop, guys. Doc. Oh, what a terrible situation for Tony Kanaan. We have trouble on the racetrack, guys. Jay Howard has crashed, bringing out our third caution here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So everybody that has stopped early Obviously, we'll take advantage of the wave around. Here comes Dario Franchitti. And the question is for Dario okay, Franchitti, was he inside the pit lane before it went yellow? And he was at the end of his run. He had to come in. Jamie? And it's a normal stop here. we're calling here. Four tires, no adjustments for Dario Franchitti, who was getting frustrated on those double file restarts, yelling that the drivers are blocking. We'll see if our league officials listen agree with Dario. He comes back out onto the racetrack. It did look like maybe a small adjustment of front wing for Dario on that stop, and we saw a wheel and tire assembly rolling down the track, which we only presume is from the right rear you see there on the 88 car of Jay Howard. And he had just come out back onto the racetrack from a pit stop. Jay, his first start here at the Indianapolis 500, former Indy Lights champion. There's the car on the apron. It gets a wiggle because the tire and wheel assembly is loose. Wheel nut probably not on there securely. He was doing everything correctly, getting back up on the gas, Eddie. And then when that happens there, and unfortunately, he's going to make contact with the wall. That was the best possible thing that could have happened, having lost that wheel, that he did not go up the track. If he would have gone up the track in front of those cars that were coming, he could have been hit by three of them. Absolutely. 
disappointing for him because this is his third attempt and finally getting into this race. So twice so far today, guys, we've seen wheel nuts not being properly installed, and it's really been costly for two cars. And it is, and there's more pressure here as we talk about the top of the show as we see Danica Patrick in a pit lane right now. Six to nine pit stops here in a 500-mile race. She had to come in to oh, get fuel. I think she has a problem. I think she was running out, and that's why you are allowed to come in during the yellow before the pits are open if you need fuel. So she will go back out, and she'll have to make another stop to get tires. But well, we were talking about uh, Tony Kanan a little bit earlier and the problem he had on his pit stop. Uh, Doc, update us. He was coming down for the routine pit stop, and as he was coming down pit road and trying to turn into the pits, the car coming out around him, they, and the crew said it was Pippa Mann. They're, they were looking down, of course, very inexperienced, making her very first pit stops today. She came down pit road, and TK could not get turned left into his pits and had to stop. The crew then had to go retrieve the car, pull it back up pit road into their pit stall, and make the pit stop. It cost him a good 35 seconds, and a break, of course, was the yellow coming out while they were sitting here to be able to change tires. And another break was there was minimal to no contact at all with anyone else. And you're right, Jerry. It was a break that the yellow came out. He's a lap down, but he will be able to take advantage eventually, if not earlier, here for the wave around. Stay with us. We'll show you what happens. Looking down from high above, here at the Indianapolis 500, our current race leader is Dario Franchitti. He is one of four different leaders. The man who's led the most laps is Scott Dixon. Danica Patrick's running 13th right now, but more on that situation in a moment. Alex Tagliani started on pole, led a total of 20 laps. He right now finds himself in fourth position. Now, there's going to be several wave around cars that will get them back on the lead lap. First, let's uh, give you an update on Danica Patrick. She is one of seven cars that are going to be penalized when the pits were closed. Give us the update, Vince. Well, Danica was about to run out of fuel. That's why she came. So they had to come back in after uh, getting that initial fuel because of the fact she was going to run out to make further adjustments. Also, another issue for Danica has been uh, dealing with the spotter and making sure that their communication is spot on. So there's Danica, and there's TJ, her father, way up high, looking down. We'll be back with more after this message from our ABC stations. Back here at the Indianapolis 500, where we have just gone back to green flag racing, and the side-by-side -side double file restarts. We've got them three wide coming in to turn number three. That's Ed Carpenter in the 67. It sorts itself out, and everybody somehow makes it through. And the car on the high side right now, Thomas Schechter in the 07. Eddie, you know he's aggressive. He drove for you back in 2002, and he's just got his foot on the gas. That's he's Anna aggressive, Beatrice. and he does not give an inch. That was Anna Beatrice in the 24. Right behind is Ed Carpenter. And they make it through the corner once again. Up front, it is Frankini and Dixon with Tagliani, Weldon, and Bell. That is your top five. While things have sort of settled down, and there you see what it looks like from turn number three there were six wave around cars and that gives us now 24 cars on the lead lap and the ganassi train is hooked back up again and pagliani is getting on the back of it what he has to do is stick with those top those top two but he's come in though from that last pit stop he was able to make a few changes scott so we'll see if they've tuned that car in a little bit better right Adam. now dixon dives down the inside takes that draft away eddie and gets a great run going down there and times it perfectly now Will that throw Frankini off enough that allows Tagliani, Marty, to be able to get a run down the back stretch? We'll find out as they head towards turn number three. Don't think he's going to be close enough. On board with Tagliani. A little better on the throttle, Trey said. We talked before about how much he was letting off. Could have made some changes on the pit stop. Fourth place there is Dan Weldon. He is closing on Tagliani. 
think when you see the two Ganassi cars passing each other, Marty, that they're actually racing for position. They're just, if the one behind has a run, he lets him go by, and then he just drags him along the track. Where when you see Tatiani fighting with Weldon, that's different. They're fighting for position.